Opposition groups in the Central African Republic have rejected a recent referendum that approved a new constitution. It allows President Foston Ashange Twadera to seek a third term in office. Opponents say the change will make him president for life. They also claim he's being supported by Russia's Wagner militia. DW's Zigoto Chaya Chameni reports from Bongi. It seems like a resounding yes for constitutional change for the country rich in gold, diamonds and timber, but also riven by unrest. This new referendum vote for constitutional change could now allow President Faustin Alcanz Duadera to run for a third term in office. The referendum is marred by controversy, but the president gave his stamp of approval. It's a feeling of fulfilling civic duty. I feel accomplished. I have done my civic duty like all my compatriots from the Central African Republic who came to vote. I feel proud. Yes because it was a demand of the Central African people. I think people will vote for this new order. The opposition's response to the referendum showed unprecedented cooperation. Rival political leaders put aside their differences to form a bloc, their aim to defend the constitution. They say the referendum was illegal. Controversially, they asked Central Africans to boycott the vote of a new constitutional referendum, but it was all in vain. Mr. Kripton Bolingumba, you asked your citizens to boycott the elections. Calling for a boycott of the elections was a huge mistake on your part. Do you agree with me? By joining uh, uh, the, the process, which is illegal, we will have given, uh, uh, given a legitimacy to an illegal process. There's no way we could have done that. People, they need to be reminded that, that this, all the process is illegal. In fact, the president of this institution went to Russia for instruction. The illegitimate president of the actual constitutional court also went to Russia to take instructions. There would have been no way for us to prevail in so doomed process. What he's trying to achieve is to establish a dictatorship. The opposition says it will push back against what it sees as a regime, but that is in the face of support from outside. Hundreds of Russia's paramilitary fighters recently arrived in the Central African Republic apparently to help secure the referendum process. So now, the Central African Republic joins other African countries including Burundi, Uganda and Rwanda, which have changed their constitutions in recent years. The president says he's following the will of the people, but questions remain over where this leaves democracy in the Central African Republic and the role played by Russia in another African nation's affairs. DW's Zigoto Chameni also got exclusive access to the president of the Central African Republic, Foston Ashange Twadera. Here is his interview. The Russia-Africa summit just ended with Putin offering grains to six African countries, including the Central African Republic. Isn't that a drop in an ocean, considering the fact that the main supply chain of the delivery of wheat remains cut due to the war? Obviously, we are confronted by questions and emergencies in our country. You know that today we are welcoming refugees coming in from Sudan. And we have launched appeals to enable us to help support these refugees who come from our neighboring country, which allow us to legitimately provide supplies in the form of cereals and fertilizer. And all this will allow African countries to continue their development activity. There was a renewed effort for a peace deal for the war in Ukraine by African leaders, and you were not part of that peace deal. Do you think Africa can play a role in reinstating peace in the war in Ukraine? Several heads of state were selected to represent Africa. They are carrying Africa's voice validly, and CAR supports them. So it is in the name of Africa that these heads of state are fulfilling this mission, which goes towards the search for peace in this world. Africa should also take part. We are feeling the impact of this conflict. 
So it is our duty to make sure that Africa's voice is heard. Uh, de l'Afrique. His Excellency, uh, is it possible to tell us uh, your cooperation with Russia in terms of security in the Central African Republic? We are working with Wagner Group paramilitary security personnel and they are closely linked to Russia and Putin. Why is that? Nous en we are cooperating with the Russian Federation on security issues. You will remember that after taking office, we were obliged to train our troops. At that time, they needed resources, because our army had been completely defeated in 2013. So we asked for support from many friendly countries. Today, the Russian Federation has kindly agreed to provide us with all the means to enable the army to fulfill its mission. Then, in 2020, the CPC, a rebel group, started to take over towns as our army was being rebuilt. And we appealed to many countries, including the Russian Federation, which agreed, along with Rwanda, to send us contingents. Your critics say the presence of the Russian paramilitary here is not for nothing. But you are selling out CAR's resources by paying Russia with access to natural resources and mineral wealth. What do you say about them? This question, and questions about resources and whether we have to pay for security, we have to do it to protect the people. We need peace. Development can only happen if there is peace. But we asked everyone, all countries, our allies, to come and help us. Some were here, but they left and abandoned us in the situation. So I don't see the need for all this baseless criticism. We've built relationships. We've asked our allies to help us strengthen security in our country. Obviously, we have relations on a security level, but there's no reason why we can't have economic relations or at any other level, since we have such ties with other countries. Why is this question not being asked about the other countries? Why have you pushed for a constitutional referendum here in the Central African Republic, which seeks to set your term time to zero? Listen, there's a whole story here. There have been marches, petitions, young people who have marched and who have given me an ultimatum. And then there was the bill proposed by a parliamentary group. All of them question us and have questioned us about the current fundamental law. Obviously, when we looked at the different aspects, we thought it would be useful to propose to the Central Africans since they have requested it. And they found it relevant. Then there was the ongoing debate in the Republic with conclusions that meant that, to implement these conclusions, the Constitution had to be amended, since these are fundamental issues. Are you ready to go in for a third term? Look, I'm not there yet. I'm in the middle of my term. For me, this is not a major issue today. I have to work to deserve the trust that my compatriots have placed in me, and I'm halfway through my term. Let's not forget that we're only in 2023, so I have more than two years left to finish this mandate. At this point, I don't want to worry about a future mandate. His Excellency, thank you once more for having us again.